I got, I think I was at, a, at an event organized by Save the Children India and um, realized with some horror actually the kind of the levels, the figures of deaths, infant you know, mortality and maternal mortality actually across India. I mean apparently we're losing something like a, a baby every 17 seconds. This is the, these are the figures that Save the Children had gave us on that occasion. And uh, that was a sort of gathering of women who all do sort of interesting things and uh, we were all asked to pledge something that you know that we might be able to do to help. And obviously, I mean, words is my currency, books is what I write. I, I pledge that I would write a book, which would in some way highlight this, this issue. And then I, I went back home and panicked, obviously, because a book, which, which sort of examines an issue in such a serious way, runs the risk of becoming a very didactic and very boring book. And I thought, do I really want to write a book that uh, is, is not going to sell in the way that my other books do? I didn't. So I, I'm, a, I'm you know, fairly pragmatic. So what I did was I sat down and thought, I know what I can do. I can get a lot of other people to join me on this. Uh, luckily, you know, for so many years of having been a novel writer and having attended festivals, I, I know a lot of writers now. So I shot off an email to about 25 writer colleagues, friends, acquaintances, putting to them the idea of a book on motherhood and a book that wouldn't just, wouldn't replicate these hallmark cards, you know, full of pink roses and, and pretty little um, ribbons, but actually show motherhood, reveal motherhood in all its, its glories as well as difficulties. And who, who's been a mother, would ever deny that motherhood, you know, all the joys come linked firmly hand in hand with a lot of um, trials, tribulations, heartbreak even. So this was the genesis of the book and uh, I got, I think that this, the responses I got were, were wonderful. I mean, say bar one or two, almost everyone wrote back saying, we'd love to be a part of this. And it was going to be a kind of fundraising because the proceeds will go to save the children, but also an awareness raising initiative. So everyone took to the task with great uh, unusualness, if you see what I mean. So I had fiction writers wanting to do non-fiction. I had non-fiction writers saying, can I do a fiction piece? And there's a very serious journalist, a couple of journalists have written for this, whom I expected would give me serious journalistic essays. But they turned out, you know, with fiction uh, pieces. So I have a couple of poets in there as well. It's, it's a kind of, it's a collection of things. It's very layered. It's very textured. It's got li little bits of... Um, fiction, non-fiction and uh, poetry and it has, I hope, a very uh, varied look at motherhood. There's someone who's written about loss, it's a first person account, there's someone who's written about special needs mothering, someone who's written about the loss of her mother, dementia to, you know, to illness and then uh, death. Um, there's someone who's written quite purely about the, the joys of motherhood because we didn't want to lose that aspect as well. Someone's done, done a very positive piece on childlessness. But what, what I hope will happen as people read the book is that it brings them some sense of those mothers who are at the very fringes of our society, who gaze at this abyss every day and really don't know, uh, you know what lies ahead and, and don't like, you know, see such darkness ahead that they, they wonder whether life itself is, is, is worth it for this, for this creature they brought into the... So um, it's it's unusual. It's nothing. It's like nothing I've done before. I mean, the whole uh, just editing alone is something which I hadn't done. I mean, I might edit my books, but at a very base level, and then it goes on to professional editors. This brought about a whole new kind of uh, way of working with words and with material, and and the respect I developed for um, the you know the the work of other people because. You know, I know how I write, but I had people writing for me who write very differently to the way I tackle uh, words. So it, it, was, it was learning a whole new business about respecting other people's ways of writing and telling stories. And um, It's going to be an absolutely wonderful book, I think, actually. It's quite stirring, I think, in parts and quite, um, um, I hope, you know, thought-provoking. I think Zuban have titled it of Mothers and Others. So um, they kept calling it within the office the Other Mother Book. <laughs> so it became of Mothers and Others. And it will be launched at the Jaipur Festival in January. 
Shabana Azmi has been a, a champion, I think, of Save the Children's work. So she's written a foreword for the book. She she will be launching it with me at Jaipur. Um, and then on International Women's Day, which is March, the 8th of March, 2013, we'll have a sort of countrywide uh, launch. The Save the Children are very keen to, to use the book to, to help people kind of see beyond their own lives. Um, it wasn't a conscious decision I took to become a writer. Uh, I had, um, I, was in, I was living in England. I, I have a, a daughter who has special needs and at the time she was about nine I think going to school and you know a very rambunctious kind of character. Uh, I had trained as a broadcast journalist and got a job with the, with the BBC. But because when you're a newbie, rookie uh, journalist, you're expected to go off and do the breakfast shift. It's always, inevitably you start on the breakfast shift. So you wake up at five o'clock in the morning or four in the morning to be out of the house at five, depending on where you live, to be at the news desk for six o'clock. And while I sort of managed it for some time, my mother came to help. Because of my daughter and because of her special needs, I found I just couldn't cope. So I chucked up my job and this was actually a rather um, glittering job to get so soon after qualifying. I was the only person on my course who got, uh, walked straight into a job. So I had to chuck up the job and found myself at home sort of stuck with nothing to do and feeling terribly sorry for myself. I really went through a massive bout of self-pity which is not something I normally suffer from. Um, but at home there was a brand new computer and you know, I didn't know quite what to do with it. My husband had said, just, just trying to encourage me to, to be a little less depressed. He said, play around with it while you can and I will, when I get home in the evening, teach you how to format and cut and paste and spell check and all these wonderful things that I didn't know about at, the point, at that point in time. This was about, this is in the year 1999, so quite a long time ago and computers were relatively new then. So I started writing a body of text that I thought, you know, I'd do a couple of pages and that was what my husband would use to teach me word processing skills. And it sounds stupid, but the fact is I sat down to write it and then simply couldn't stop. So I must have sat down to write at about nine o'clock in the morning after my husband and daughter had left and found myself just going and going and going at it. I didn't stop for lunch, I didn't stop for anything. So there was a story that was already in me and that was bursting to get out, I think. And at the end of that day, I'd written about 40 or 50 pages, which is amazing. Now, when I look back to that period, and I think, oh, no, did I manage 40 pages? I can barely do six or seven a day now. Um, but I knew at the end of that day that I had a story to tell, that there was enough of a story to fill up the pages of a book. And then I started sort of chapterizing it and doing various things in my head that I, I talk about in my creative writing sessions sometimes. And, and um, it became, that was a book that became Ancient Promises, my debut novel, that has actually done very well. So it it's, might even be my best-selling book of all the seven that I've done. So uh, maybe that's the way in which books should really be written, you know. You just sort of sit there and throw your heart into it and, and have no thought whatsoever for readers and editors and publishers. I had no, this was something I was doing for myself. I had no idea at that point in time that I would even be approaching an, an agent with it or an editor with it. So um, that, that was the start of my writing career. But I think it varies enormously from writer to writer. I've done the introduction for the Other Mother book, which mentions briefly my own uh, sort of uh, experiences of motherhood, which are quite sort of varied. It varies from miscarried, miscarriages to mothering a special needs child to um, deciding at some point that actually not having any children after a point was you know, the wise thing to do. So uh, it sort of delves briefly into all of that, but it's mostly uh, a thank you, I think, to all the writers who've contributed and who've given us some, some very beautiful pieces.